So as many other people are doing right now, I've decided to submit my two cents, a few thoughts surrounding the events in Charlottesville and now moving on across the country uh, into demonstrations in Washington and probably other parts of the country by now as well. Um, you know, the, the demonstration itself, the reaction and words from uh, President Trump and so on, uh, just a few thoughts that I wanted to offer. For one, um, some reflection from the gentleman that I saw on the news, a retired lieutenant army, or a retired army lieutenant general named Russell Honore, I think that's how you pronounce it. At any rate, the guy's last name is literally the word honor, so his word is good enough for me, especially being a retired lieutenant general of the United States Army. And he offered his thoughts that he would wish for the president to make a more explicit direct condemnation of the, this white nationalist movement and everything that they stand for. And um, obviously, we have had some words of, from the president, and he has condemned the actions, but offered it with this tepid tempering of sorts, with the, this this comment about both sides, um, which I think is absolutely weak um, and troubling to me, because this isn't a two sides issue. Um, I think when you go into that realm of two sides, it, it's kind of like when, when a child gets in trouble for something, and then they point at the other child and it's like, yeah, well, they did it too, or they did something too, and that just, your, your, your two sides argument just doesn't do it for me, man. Um, I, I much more side with, as uh, our former vice president, Joe Biden, put it, there is only one side. And as for my part, as I see it, that one side is the side of our American communal values. The same American values that I saw were mine to protect when I signed up for service in the United States Army. I mean, that's kind of the way I saw it. When, when I, you know, signed up, I thought of myself as there to be a part of protecting our country and our values. And... Again, for my part, the values that I stand for are those that unite the all of us, um, not exclusionary to, you know, minorities or, or, or any, any group such as that, but the ideals that include the all of us, not what this white nationalist, white supremacist group is standing for. Um, if I may offer... Uh, a little story about my time uh, in the army. Um, some of you may know that when and when in basic training or, or uh, AIT or other uh, types of training, one is uh, becomes uh, quite accustomed to riding around in the back of a cattle truck with every other son of a gun in the unit all crammed in there with you. So you get crammed into these cattle trucks. You really don't have a whole lot of room to move. Limited mobility at best. Usually no mobility because you're just crammed up in there. You're wearing your Kevlar helmet and you've got somebody else's rucksack pushed up, pinning your Kevlar helmet up against the wall of the cattle truck or up against the guy right behind you or beside you. So you have limited movement. I think of one of the times that I was on one of these cattle truck rides and uh, my eyes end up getting fixed on because of the limited movement. The whole time I had to stare at some graffiti writing on the wall, and that graffiti on the wall read, Johnny Reb, alive and well in the Union Army. And for me, that I, I, I found that to be something of kind of a threat, I, I, you might say. Um, it seemed like a, a, a bragging threat of sorts, that, that there was this insidious group that has seen that they, they feel that they have, you know, kind of snuck in and were lying in wait or something like that. And I think that maybe we're seeing a movement of th this same group right now in these white nationalists, these white supremacists that are 
you know, feel so emboldened to come out and try to claim some sort of superiority or some sort of claim that they are rightfully something, uh, rightfully do something or something. I, I don't know what their claim is, but I, I do feel that it, it flies in the face of, of our American values. And I was equally troubled yesterday to see in my news feed, to see so many, in, in different comment threads, so many people supporting these white nationalists and their movement to reclaim something that really isn't rightfully theirs to begin with. Um, I, I, I feel that there's this group that looks to take away our progress, and I don't want them to take away our progress, and I don't think they will. Um, when you look at the way that progress has, has come to us over the years, um, and you think about the fact that this, this, um, this, the current events in, in Charlottesville are surrounding the proposition to remove a statue of Robert E. Lee a man who has become something of a icon to, you know, people who are Confederate sympathizers, the KKK, white nationalists, so on and so forth. However, one of his descendants, Harper Lee, a direct descendant of Robert E. Lee, has become a symbol of exactly the opposite of this white nationalism. Um, you may know that Harper Lee is the author of To Kill a Mockingbird, which the book surrounds the court trial of a black man who um, was faced with undue charges. And, you know, there's obviously large racial implications in that book. And I feel that our American institutionalized racism was put on trial in that book um, every bit as much as anything else. And it's seen as something of a benchmark of progress for our nation. That very book is a benchmark of that progress. And that progress continues. Um, January 20th, for instance, of 2009, we had the inauguration of Barack Obama, our first black president. You know, we, it, it was a benchmark of where we had come from previously, these false definitions of black men and women being three-quarters human or or other terrible uh, things that had been institutional in our country at one time, but now we're gone. We're far behind us, and we have moved past that, and we're going to continue to move past that. I think of January 16th, when Henry Louis Gates was arrested, outside, uh, Jan I should say January 16th of that same year, um, when Henry Louis Gates was arrested outside of his own home. And again, large racial implications surrounding that arrest. However, um, the president at the time, Barack Obama, invited both Mr. Gates and the arresting officer, um, Sergeant James Crowley, to the White House to talk it out over a couple of beers. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, nothing unites people better than just talking it out over a couple of beers. Um, I, I can think of nothing more of a uniting event such as that. Um, but surrounding those events, the two men got to talking, and in turn, Henry Louis Gates did a little bit of research himself in his field, and uh, he uncovered the fact that him and the arresting officer were actually themselves related to each other. They were they had a common distant relative, I believe, in Ireland, you know, many generations ago. So there was something that bonded them besides the terrible events, or the unfortunate events, I should say, of his arrest. Um, and I think that that is symbolic of the togetherness that we, as a nation, um, must continue... And I just hope that we do. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you all might have to say about what's going on. Um, feel free to drop something in the comments section. Uh, in the meantime, I've got to go make some dinner. But thanks for watching. Uh, good night.